All right, so when we uh, were calculating enthalpy change uh, last lecture, we knew that we had to take our heat of the reaction, Q, and divide it by the number of moles of our limiting reactant. Uh, so we already know it's an extensive property and it's based on the number of moles of the sample. Uh, so it's not surprising that we can also use the stoichiometry of a uh, balanced chemical equation and the molar relationships of the uh, reactants and products to uh, calculate how much energy is um, going to be produced or uh, absorbed from a chemical reaction if we know the enthalpy change for that reaction. So an example 6.7, uh, we can calculate um, how much energy is uh, produced if a uh, LP gas tank in a home barbecue contains 13.2 kilograms of propane, and that's C3H8, uh, we can calculate the heat associated with the complete combustion of all the propane in the tank. Okay, <clears throat> so this is uh, essentially just a dimensional analysis problem. What we're going to do is we're going to calculate how many kilojoules of energy we can get from that uh, liquid propane gas tank. And we're going to figure out how much energy we can get based on how much propane is in there. And we know that there's 13.2 kilograms of propane in the tank. Now, if we think about what our enthalpy of the reaction is, it's on a per mole basis. So our conversion factor that we're going to use using the enthalpy is actually per mole. So we can say that um, if we're interested in propane, we can say that this reaction will produce 2044 kilojoules of energy per one mole of propane. Now I know I wrote down 2044 as positive and the enthalpy of the reaction is negative. That's just telling me which way the energy is going. So negative implies that it's exothermic and it's transferring energy to the uh, surroundings. But if we're just asking about how much energy we can uh, get out of a, uh, a certain sample, we don't have to worry about the sign so much. Okay. Since uh, the relationship between kilojoules and uh, of energy and the amount of propane is on a per mole basis, we are going to, of course, going to have to convert kilograms to moles uh, using the molar mass. And since the molar mass is always going to be in grams per mole, we're going to have to convert kilograms to grams, then grams to moles using the molar mass of the substance. And then we can go from moles to energy in kilojoules using the enthalpy as my conversion factor. All right, so we know that there are a thousand grams in one kilogram. So that's our first conversion factor. Now we're gonna to need to calculate the molar mass so that we can go from grams to moles. So the molar mass of propane is gonna be the sum of three carbons plus eight hydrogen. If we look on the periodic table, we can see that uh, carbon is going to be 12.01 grams per mole plus 8 times 1.008 grams per mole. And if we throw that into our calculator, we get 44.09 grams per mole. All right, so that's gonna be used as my next conversion vector. And of course I want grams on the bottom, 44.09 grams in one mole, C3H8. Then we can use the enthalpy, the conversion factor we developed right here, to go from moles to units of energy in kilojoules. So the enthalpy says that for every one mole of uh, propane I have, C3H8, I'm going to get 2044 kilojoules out of that tank. Okay? And so now moles cancel out, grams previously did, so I've set up my uh, problem correctly. The only uh, unit I have left is kilojoules and that's what I wanted for my final answer. So now we're just going to take 13.2 times a thousand 
divided by 44.09 times 2044, and we get uh, quite a big number, 611,948, and we've got to cut it down to what, three sig figs for 13.2, so that will be 612,000 kilojoules. Or, if we wanted to, we can convert that to scientific notation, 6.12 times 10 to the 5th kilojoules of 